what are your thoughts about that greater than 50 percent uh, population? You know, I think that that is a significant question to be asking. I think most patients uh, don't want to take chemotherapy if they can avoid taking chemotherapy and would favor taking the monotherapy for, for many reasons, including side effect profiles. But however, having said that, there is a group of patients to where I do think chemotherapy you need to give, and those are patients that are really symptomatic patients to where you want to be able to get a response sooner. There was a slight difference in time to response if you got the triplet versus if you got a, mono, a monotherapy. So um, in 024, so there's a slight, slight difference. So I think, you know, you really do want to give chemotherapy uh, with the immunotherapy, you know, in, in, in those, those patients, in those yeah. patients. But if you have somebody with more indolent disease, Absolutely. you may not want to give that chemotherapy. So I think like everything, you have to have these discussions with, with the patients that's sitting in front of you and do an informed decision making. But I think for the most part, yeah, and and I and just re if I remember correctly, if you look at one year survival, in not it much was different. Seventy three percent versus seventy percent. That's so, correct. Uh, identical like that. Ben, no. any, any, anything to add? I would just echo what Karen said. I think that these, uh, especially over fifty percent, mm -hmm. I think treatment decisions need to be individualized. Mm -hmm. And for those patients that need to be debulked and they're mm -hmm. symptomatic, I would go with the triplet therapy. And for my patients that you know don't have many mm -hmm. symptoms or have more indolent disease, and we 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 have an understanding of how to assess this in the clinic. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I would go with single agent Pembro. I think one of the questions that comes up in this trial, and, and we, I don't really know the answer to, is do we need to test for PD-01 at all? Uh, will the community receive this as an all-comer uh, well, I, I regimen? Yeah, right, I, but right, I think this right, is something right, where we right, still, right. given how precious tissue is and the need for genotyping, and um, you know, I certainly would advocate for PD-01. When I throw this out there to be more provocative than anything else, but I think this is a message that the community uh, oncologists are a little confused on now, given that it benefited every single patient population, the less than ones, and, and uh, across the board. So It's such I, I, a small expenditure right. of tissue for yeah. right. pdl one right. yeah. test right. as opposed to right. NGS or and, some of the other well, assays. It is, but it, it can take time in a community setting. You know, when you, if you have to send it out just to go from the or, placing the order to having pathology cut the slides to sending it out, that does take time, and that still is an issue. Now, certainly we have a 24 to 48 hour turnaround time, but, but I do think we have to be respectful to the, our community colleagues where it is a little bit more challenging to do that. And remember, everybody still needs to get EGFR, right. ALK, and ROS before and they- BRAF, okay, And BRAF. Yeah, yeah. And BRAF, and they and still- And <laughs> so They others, need yeah. a NGS yeah. in reality. Yeah. So they do need that first, and that takes a little bit more tissue. So I think that um, it, it's still, the tissue still remains a challenge. And to Corey's point, I think you, I think you did say this EGFR and ALK positive patients right. were, were excluded, excluded from, excluded from this trial. So you do the math, we've excluded squamous, which is roughly a quarter to a third of patients. We've excluded the EGFR and ALK population amongst the non-squamous, which is probably about 20% of that group. This study probably only applies to maybe half the patients we see. So Corey, any, any safety issues from, from so your... The, from toxicity was heightened somewhat, but not overwhelmingly. There was some um, uh, renal toxicity that we hadn't uh, uh, necessarily anticipated from the randomized phase two, but the rates were low. Grade three and four toxicity was really uh, only minimally higher. And beyond that, the usual immunotherapy-related toxicities, uh, uh, thyroid disease, rash, uh, Nothing arthritis. unexpected, though. Certainly nothing unexpected, and by and large, for the most part, a fairly well-tolerated regimen. And that mirrors my, my clinical experience with mm -hmm. this triplet. I don't see that many uh, toxicities that are unexpected right. with the triplet. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I just also wanted to add, when we have that debate about monotherapy versus the triplet, that also creatinine clearance, there are many patients with these low creatinine clearance that don't make them eligible for the pemetrexid or for the cisplatinum. We tend to give carboplatinum, but it's really a pemetrexid, I think, Concern. So that's another 10 and to 15 percent of patients who can't get on this. that is a bigger percent of patients than I we have realize. Respect, we consider pemetrexid one of the least toxic agents we have. 
But there's enormous respect for that drug. It, uh, it's FDA approved in people with creatinine clearance of 45 or higher. So think about our older patients, maybe a 75 or 80 year old woman uh, with a creat that ostensibly looks normal. It's 1.2 or 1.3. She only weighs 100 pounds. I guarantee you her creatinine clearance is yeah. below 45. So, and so I agree with Karen. I'd yeah. give a taxane preferentially. And there, the data don't apply. Yeah. So is this a new standard of care? For all of us? In my mind, yes. Yes. I, I was, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was saying you would give monotherapy when we were having the debate. You'd give monotherapy in, if, in the greater than 50% if you couldn't give the, the, another reason not to absolutely think about right. when you're giving no. the triple. That's my point. You know, but I had, your point sorry. is well taken. No, I just had some concerns before I saw the subset analysis about these never smokers. Mm -hmm. And we, we tend to believe that these never smokers don't derive a benefit from immunotherapy approaches. And we saw in the 70-something subset analysis patients uh, from this trial, the never smokers did benefit. And the benefit was quite pronounced, even though the confidence interval was mm -hmm. wide. Um, this changed my practice a little bit. Yes, we need to genotype these patients to look for actionable mutations. But outside of that, I'm starting to consider using the triplet for these patients.